good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody. I like seeing full, full crowds. You know, you can get fuller, but I'm saying it's good that I like seeing people here. Um, first thing we'll start off with is, uh, um, if you didn't notice, uh, Noel, uh, people here and people watching, we have a website up. It's uh, www.lancycavaryag.org. And on our website, you'll be able to find information about events, about services, uh, links you to our sermons, um, to our, and our YouTube channel. So, um, you know, okay. It's all, it's all good. It's, it's all good. So, so yes, we have our, 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 our website up. So if you'd like to, uh, to, you know, ever, if you ever, if you're ever wondering about something, you can go there, find some information. Um, if you'd like to partner, partner with us in prayer at Lansing Calvary Assembly, we would, we would, we would love it. We need prayer all the time. We need to be uplifted because when we're doing stuff, when you're doing stuff in the kingdom, I'm saying you're always under attack. Then that's just the way it is. And we're ours, you're, we're under attack, and we have to pray for ourselves, and if we have the prayers of others, really help. If you'd like to partner with us financially, we're doing things at this church, and we're, you know what? Um, we're going to reach the community, and we're going to be doing things, and it takes, it, unfortunately, it takes money. So if you'd like to partner with us financially, we would, um, we would greatly appreciate that also. All right. So www.lancycalvaryag.org. Okay. So today... We're going to be looking at an important part of a Christian's life to the outside world. To the outside world. It can actually, it can be in the inside world also. We're going to examine the powerful but un, often unutilized concept of testimony. We see in that song today, it says, um, it's called, Yours Will Be Land of Glory. And it says, you know, when I wake up in the land of glory and with the saints, I will tell my story. That's telling, they're going to be telling the saints. You're going to be telling people that live before us. We're going to be telling them our story. And they can tell us their story. But that's when we get to heaven. But, but before we get to heaven, we also have a story to tell, don't we? We have, we have a story to tell people. And people want to hear our story. People want to hear, people want to hear our testimony. You know, testimony is, is powerful because it's your personal story from moving, from moving from death until life. It shows the ability of God to change a life, a situation, or a heart. Because there's many people that we come across that, you know what, they have a testimony, and often we don't tell people. If they would tell people, that just, that just it's so, it's, it's like a, a magnet. It, it just attracts you to, you know, their testimony. It just attracts you to God. You know, the great thing about testimonies is that we all have one. We all have a testimony. You believe that? I don't think it's anybody here that's, just, that, that's floating like clouds. Everybody here has gone through something in their life, right? Have you gone through some stuff in your life? Raise your hand. I've gone through some stuff in my life. But the great thing about testimonies is we all have one. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned. And fall short of the glory of God. You know, we're born in this sin and we have a sinful nature. That's just the way it is. We have, a, we have a sinful nature. Sin is all we know when we're born. That's why when you look at two kids, you look at like two, two kids, uh, let's say like five or six years old. You know, they know the difference between right and wrong, correct? And if they have a toy, one of, one of them has a toy, and the other one wants a toy, the other one will go over to the kid, the other one, and just grab it from them and steal it. Because that's, a, that's just the simple nature of, of us, of people. But God, because of his love for us, had a plan for, for us, even though we didn't deserve it. He had a plan for us. It's, I don't know, I talk to people like, well, then why did God, why did God make people if you knew they were going to sin? Because he loved us so much. You know, love, love, you know, when you love, when you love people, sometimes you do things that you didn't, that you wouldn't never do. Good and bad. Let's turn to Romans 5, 8. And this, this tells us about the, uh, the love that God has for us, that he demonstrated for us. Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died for us even though we didn't deserve it. We didn't deserve it. We, don't, we still don't deserve it. But, but you know what? He died for us and we didn't deserve it. None of us deserve the love that God gives us. 
There's nothing we can do that would, that would ever, you know, God doesn't need anything for us, from us, does he? He doesn't need anything from us, but he loves us so much that he just, he watches over us, he protects us, and he just, he, he, he just, he cares about us, our, our every need. You know, yeah, it, you know, and, and every day, each day we wake up, his mercy is new each morning, isn't it? Amen. Whatever we do, we might do some stupid things, but his mercy is new each morning. Amen. Right. Thank God he doesn't keep track of our mess ups because we mess up, don't we? We mess up, and you know, some of us, you know, we might have messed up, we might mess up on a daily. We might mess up, you know, last week once, a big mess up or a small mess up, but we mess up. You know, the thing about each of us is that we have our own story. We each have our testimony on how God has worked in our life. And he has worked in our life. All you got to do is just ask somebody, ask people, just, you know what, how does God work in your life? And they'll tell you some things that you weren't even expecting. Some of us, man, some of us, you know, man, our testimony is strong, but we don't even, we keep it to ourselves. We don't tell people. And that we're, that's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to focus on... Uh, testimony. We're going to focus on, um, you know, just the whole, the whole, everything about testimony, the power of it, you know, just how it just brings, it just, it brings, it bridges you to people. So the, today's sermon is titled My Story. We're going to focus on the power of testimony. And let's pray. Dear God, I just thank you for this, uh, this message today. God, I just pray, I ask that you, that it blesses people. It blesses people. God, you know what? You put it on my heart to, uh, to teach about this, say about testimony. It's a powerful thing. And it's something I know that you want us to tell others about. And I and God, I just I pray that this just blesses everybody here, everybody watching. God, and you know what? God just whatever you want me to speak, I'll speak it. Whatever you want me to say, I'll say it, God. And we thank you for today. In Jesus' name, amen. So testimony. So let's define testimony. So testimony is an affirmation and de declaration of something that is true and can be proven. So when you have a testimony, it's something that you've gone through, something that you could, that's, that's real. It's not, you, don't, you can't give a testimony if, it's, if it hasn't happened to you. You can only testify in things that are true to you. So the Latin root word for testimony is testes, meaning witness. witness. You know, when you testify, you're affirming something and declaring it to be true. So when I, when, I was think, when, I was, when I was writing the sermon, I was thinking about, in the court of law, you give testimony, meaning, which means you're affirming and declaring to others what you have witnessed. They don't bring you up in the, up, um, up in the court, um, up in the stand, unless, you're, um, unless you can give a testimony. They don't want to say, they don't want to hear you, what, what you, like, what you think um, happened, or what you think you, what you think that you might have seen, but you, they want to give you, they, you need to give a testimony of, like, what is true to, um, through your eyes, and what you heard. You know, that testimony is based on evidence and proof. You know, it's, it, it's been true for you, so you're able uh, to testify about the situation or matter. And you can only testify in things that you experienced. You can't testify in stuff that you've never been through or dealt with. That's what makes testimony so important because we all here, everybody here has gone through something. And lots of times it's things that other people haven't gone through. That's what makes it so powerful. Can I get an amen or something? <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's good. Um, You know, testimony, that's why testimony is so powerful. It's something, it's, it's something powerful when you've been through something or through something, been somewhere or through something and can, and can articulate it to others. You can, you can tell people. It bridges you to people. It bridges you to people. And this is especially true with people who are going through something you're going through or have gone through. If I tell you, if, if, if somebody's, you know, if, if I'm not going through something and somebody gives a testimony of what they've been through, that's powerful to me because that's what I'm going through. Amen. So, had, you know, testimony just by it in, in nature, by itself, has the power to impact people. 
it has a bridging quality to it, a bridging quality to it. It connects you with others. You know, it's, it's just something powerful like when you're, you know, you're going through something and somebody else is telling you about the same thing that, you, they, went, that they went through and they're still alive. They're able to tell you about it. That's something powerful, isn't it? That just, that, just, that just right there just connects you to that person. You may not even know that person. That may, person may be totally different from you, but it just connects you to that person. You just have an instant relationship with that person. They're like, you know what? You, you know how I feel. Because sometimes, you know, this is to be true. In life sometimes, you don't, some people, you know, just don't understand what you're going through. You know, some people don't. They, you know, if you've never dealt with something or gone through something, you just don't understand what they're talking about. You never, you can have empathy, but you cannot, you just cannot, you cannot just understand fully. But when you, when you talk to people that have battled something that, you, um, that you're battling or gone through something that you've um, gone through, it just gives you confidence that everything's going to be okay. Doesn't it? Everything's going to be okay. You know, basically they're saying, you know, I fought this battle and I won it. And that's what we need to hear at times, don't we? Amen. When, you're in the, when you're in the middle of, of, of warfare, you know, you need to have people, you know what, come on, you know, I, I've done this before. We can do this. You got this. You know, and people, and the great thing about testimony is it's like, you know, when people are talking about certain things, it, it, they tell you, you know what, this should have took, um, taken me out, but it didn't. I shouldn't be here today, but I am. You know, God saved me, and I want to tell you about it. I want to tell you about it. You know, and that's the thing. When you meet somebody, you have no idea what they're battling or have battled in their life. You know, people we see every day, we see people at church, we see people at the grocery store, we see people walking down the street, right in front of us, and we don't even know what they're going through. You know, people like to put smiles on, don't they? They like to put smiles on their faces and, and, and try to convey to the world everything's all right, when it's not all right really inside. It's not all right with their body. And a lot of times, you know, these people that are, they keep things inside, they're just slowly dying. They're slowly dying inside. They're dying like a, a, a painful death where, you know, it's, just, it's, just, it's, it's bad because they feel like they're the only one who's going through this or ever, who's ever gone through this. When we know that it's a lie, but also at the same time, we just, that's what the devil likes to do. He likes to isolate us. Yeah. And when he isolates us, when he isolates us, you know, we, it, that basically takes a lot of our hope out of the situation that God's going to come through. But we do. We come across people every day that, 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 that seem to, to have it all together, but really they don't. They just, you know, they, deep down inside, they're crying. They're crying out for somebody who would just talk to them and just connect with them. And, and, and this is, and, and, and this is, this is a shame. This is, this is really, it's bad. It's 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 bad. It's it's bad when you're just when you're living life around people or you know you have a family or whatever and you just feel lonely. That's that's not good, is it? And a lot of times these people that are um, living life that they're they're embarrassed or uh, they have too much pride to tell people. You know what? I'm struggling. I'm hurting. And I'm sure we can all relate to this. There have been seasons in our life where we didn't think we were going to make it. Has anybody been there before? What do you, no, you didn't think you were going to make it. You just thought, you know what? I'm not going to make it. I'm probably not going to be here much longer. And life has a tendency to throw us curveballs when we're looking for a fastball. How many people have ever played baseball? Has anybody ever played baseball? When you're playing baseball and you're looking for a fastball down the middle and somebody throws you a curveball, it just throws you right off. And you, a lot of times the curveball comes in and you back out and if that, it, 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 it hits right in the strike zone. And that's how life is. It just, um, it just, it just, it hits you. Bam! It hits you. It hits you hard. Life gets really quick. It can get really quick all of a sudden, can it? One diagnosis, one, 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 just one change of trajectory in your life can just change a lot of things for you. You know, it could be death. It could be injury. It could be a loss of a job. 
You know, you don't know. It doesn't matter what it is, but life is just different now. It's just not the same that it, um, it's not the same as it used to be yesterday. You know, the, the, and these people, you know, their life is different. They're not the same person they were yesterday because life changed in a moment of time. And life does change in a moment of time. And it's in these times where we, we need to hold on to our faith. We have to hold on to our faith. We have to hold on real tight and not let go. Hold on real tight and not let go. And I'm talking about holding on for life. Have you ever been there? Have you ever have you ever been in a situation where you just have to hold on to something for life? Because if you didn't, if you let go, it might be over. You ever had to do that before? Some of us shaking our heads. Yeah, I'm saying it's just it's we it's real. You know, your life is changed and you're under attack and you have to hold on. You have to hold on with everything you have in you. You got to keep it. You got to grab it. White knuckling. You know, and these, but these are the seasons of life where stretching takes place. These are the seasons of life where your faith is built. The truth is that people talk about these things. They talk about, you know, they talk about being stretched and, and they talk about uh, building the faith. But you know what? A lot of times people don't really want to do it because it's, it's tough when you go through seasons where God is stretching you and, and, and your faith is building. It's tough. But, it's, but God is making, and is making you and shaping you into what he wants you to be. Amen. He's refining you. You're going into the fire one way and you're coming out differently. Let's turn to Isaiah 43.2. And this is God talking to the nation of Israel. Isaiah 43.2. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. So this verse, Isaiah 43, 2, is talking about the nation of Israel. When it talks about going through the waters, I will be with you. It's talking about when they crossed the Red Sea. The waters, were, I don't know how high the waters were, but they were high, weren't they? And did, they, any, did any of the Israelites die? God kept them safe. That's a testimony they could tell their grandkids. And, they, and, their, and their, their grandkids can tell their grandkids. That's a testimony. When it's talking about walk um, through rivers, they should not overflow you. It's when the Israelites were crossing the Jordan River. How many of you have ever been through a river and it's like an undercurrent and it, it just, it takes you under? And sometimes it kills you, doesn't it? It does kill you sometimes. But that's a testimony. Because the people that crossed the Jordan River didn't get taken out. They're alive. They were healthy. And they could give a testimony. When you walk through the fire, you should not be burned. This is, um, this is talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. King, ne uh, King Nebuchadnezzar had a, a, a statue built. And he said, you know what? You're going to bow to it. And if you don't bow to it, you're done. And they said, you know what? We're not bowing to, the, we're not bowing to that. And what happened? They got, thrown, they got thrown in a furnace. Did they come out? Did, did any of their, any hair on their head get singed? It didn't. Because God was with them. It's their testimony. All these situations um, that I just that I just named were is individuals. These individuals, the nations, the nation of Israel, and these in uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego experienced the true and living God, and had the ability to testify to others about what God did in their life. That's powerful. St that's powerful stuff. That's real powerful stuff. You know, and just like these situations with the Red Sea, with the Jordan River, with getting put in a furnace, uh, where testimonies were taking place, there are also seasons in your life right now where testimonies are happening. They're happening right now as we speak. And these testimonies, the testimonies we're going through right now are not just for us. They're for people who we come in contact with in, with our lives. If we're at the grocery store, if we're actually at, at church, you know, there's people that, want to, that need to hear these things. They need to hear these things. 
And why do they need to hear it? Because testimonies point people to God. They point, they point people to God. And, you know, and testimonies are a tool each of us can use to advance the kingdom of God. You know, so much you don't, so, so much you're not, uh, evangelism's not your thing. So what you don't like talking, you know, maybe you might not like talking to people, but you can give testimony. And the great thing about it, we all have our own testimony. No matter how small or big, or big or small, we all have a testimony to tell the world. Man, I, I'm sure, I'm, I mean, it's, it's crazy because sometimes you can talk to a person and if they, they can just tell you and, and, and if they're, you know, you're just like, man, that's a testimony. Oh, I didn't ever think it was a testimony. Sometimes you got to point, uh, point testimonies to others when we're talking to them. Isn't that crazy? They didn't even think it was a testimony, but it is a testimony. So we're going to talk, we're going to turn right now to, uh, uh, right now in our Bibles to the book of Acts. And we're going to be beginning, we're going to, we're going to be in, uh, in Acts chapter 8. And this is a testimony of Apostle Paul, who was named Saul at the time. Man, Apostle Paul had one of the greatest testimonies in history. And we're going to, we're going to read about it today. So prior to chapter 8, Stephen, who was first mentioned, I'll give you a little background. Stephen, who was first mentioned in Acts, was one of seven deacons appointed by the apostles to distribute food and charitable aid to poorer members of the community in the early church. And he was martyred. As a result, a great persecution ran wild against the church. Paul, who was named Saul at the time, played a big part of this persecution. So we're talking about Saul, who was... You know, he was, he, he was, he, he, he hated the church and he was persecuting Christians. He was doing all this bad stuff. And let's read, let's read. We're just going to, let's read, let's read. So uh, Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. So this is Saul persecuting the church. No, Saul was consenting to his death. And, consent, and that, what that basically means he was agreeing to Stephen's death. He was cheering it on. He was a cheerleader. When Stephen got martyred, he was cheering it on, saying, let's go, more and more. At that time, great, a great persecution rose against the church, when, which was at Jerusalem, and they, all, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc, havoc, everybody say havoc. Heavy out um, of the church, entering in every house, every entering every house, and dragging off men and women, committing them to prisons. Man, he went loco after Stephen's death. Everybody say loco, loco. He was going loco. He was going in the houses, going in the house. Just like, just think about it. I, I like to think when I read, when I when I when I read the Bible and I'm studying, I like to think of things of like in in today's terms. How many of you? When you're sitting at your dinner table, just think about, okay, just think about last night. You're eating dinner at your dinner table, and all of a sudden, somebody comes into your house and drags you off. How would that make you feel? Would you be happy today? Would you have a smile on your face? You didn't even get to eat your pork chop or whatever you ate. I'm saying, it's just like he went in there and was dragging Christians out of their home. And they got thrown, thrown into prisons. And I'm sure he wasn't doing this in a pleasant manner. He wasn't going to, like, your house and said, excuse me, could you come out, please? You were going to go to prison. He wasn't doing it. I mean, he was doing it rough, probably. I'm talking about this thing, pulling you all the stuff. Your head's hitting dressers and refrigerators and everything. It, wasn't, it was not a good time um, to be a Christian at that time. It was rough. And Saul was just assaulting Christians. Man, he would have went to prison for life for just assault and just nastiness. You know, so we know that Saul wasn't a god. He wasn't a godly man. He was a roughneck, a roughneck who hated Christianity and Christians. He was he had a burning passion to hurt Christians and destroy the church. Woo! So we got a little background about Saul. He was not a nice guy. He was dragging and is and just disrupting. Uh, the life of a Christian. He come right into your house. He was so bold. He come right into your house. You're eating like a. You're eating some macaroni and cheese, and he just comes out and just pulls you out and just, you just, 
He's taking you out of the, your house. So let's jump to Acts 9. Let's everyone say my story. My story. My story. We're going to be in Acts uh, chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. So this is, this is the beginning. This is when Saul's testimony happened. The, the Damascus, Damascus role, saw he's converted, his conversion is happening here. Starting with verse 1 right here, chapter 9. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if, they, if he found anyone who were of the way, the gospel, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. I'm not really sure, you know, if it was just men and women. I'm not sure. But you think kids were getting dr drunk up their house? I, just, I, don't, I don't know. It doesn't say that, but I'm just thinking, like, you know what? He, his, his, his anger and, and desire just to persecute the church, I'm sure people just any age were probably getting, probably getting hurt. Verse 3. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saw, saw. Why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? To me, that was kind of that was kind of weird because it's like, you know, saw at an early age, you know, it, um, he attended Bible school. So he knew who God was. So this speaks to me. This speaks, that, this verse right here speaks to me. That means that um, knowing the Bible and knowing God are two different things. You can know the Bible, but you might not know God. You can know the Bible in and out, but you might not have a relationship with God and not know who he is. He says, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, this is continuing with verse 5, Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goals. Which means that it's hard for you to, for hard for you to go against me, my will or, your, or, or my plans. Isn't that true, though? Isn't that true? Like, it's hard. If God wants something, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, he's going he's gonna to get what he wants. He, he's going he's gonna to get your attention eventually. You might have to take lots of detours, but eventually you'll get to that, same, that right path. Verse 6. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And then the man who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Man, testimony. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when, when his eyes were open, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus, and he was there three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Hungry, hungry, thirsty, and blind. You know, God, God, God got Saul's attention just like he needs to get ours at times. Sometimes, you know, we need to get this blinding light and just stuff that just fall down and not be able to see. We have to kick against the goals. God wants us to do something and refuse to listen. And he's only doing it because he wants it, because he, he loves us. Because he knows if we, if we make our own choice, we're going to just, we're going to fall right into like a deep uh, crevice. We're going to fall, fall into a deep hole like the Grand Canyon. We kick and scream and fuss, but we're, we want our way. Very childish when you think about it, but he still loves us. That's the amazing part, that even though we kick, we fuss, we fight, we just, we gripe, we complain, whatever adjective you want to use, but he still loves us, you know? He, he'll let you go through 25 detours, 100 detours, and to get back on the right path. And sometimes, you know, that's just the way it has to be. Let's continue in Acts uh, 9, chapter 9, verses 10 through 22. So... This is, we're going to continue, so um, start with verse 10. Now there was a certain disciple of Damascus named Ananias, and, and, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, here I am, Lord. That's more like it. When God says, when God calls you, you say, here I am. Not like, who are you? And this is not the Ananias and Sapphira that uh, got killed. They, got, they dropped dead. This is a different Ananias. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarus, um, for behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias, named Ananias, coming in and putting his hand on him so he might receive a sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name.
Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. When God asks you to do something, don't be scared, right? Don't be scared. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is, chosen, he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. This is verse 16 now. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me, so sent me that you may receive your sight. And behold, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled. We've been talking about that, haven't we? Being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's important. It's important. Immediately, there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he rose and was baptized. Yeah. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Everybody say that. Open the eyes of my heart. Yes. So when he, when he had received food, he was strengthened, and then Saul spent some days with the disciples of Damascus. So uh, Saul just had an experience with God. It was, the divine, it was a divine experience. So what does he do now? What does he do now? He had a divine experience with God. It's kind of like salvation, right? You have a divine experience with God. So what are you going to do now? What are you going to do? We're going to be in verse 20 now of chapter uh, 9. Or we're still, actually still in there. So immediately, I want everybody to say immediately. immediately. He preached to Christ in the synagogues that he is a son of God. I think this has to do with him being um, filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't think he could have um, preached. I don't think he could have preached in the synagogues if he didn't have the Holy Spirit with him. You think so? I don't think so. I don't think he'd have the power. He wouldn't have the boldness. So that's something right there that tells you being, that's why being filled with the Holy Spirit is so important. It gives you strength and power and boldness to run the race God has called you to run. He just called Saul to run a race. He said, get over here, boy. You're one of mine now. We're going we're gonna to do this thing. You're going to run it with me. You got the spirit. You seen Jesus, and you know that I'm God. He had experience with the Trinity. Verse 21, then, then all who heard were amazed and said, is this not the one, is this not he who destroyed those who caught on his name in Jerusalem and has come here for that purpose so that he might Bring them bound to the chief priest. But Paul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who oh, dwelt in Damascus, proving that this Jesus is the Christ. Man, that just tells you right there. Sometimes, you know what, when God calls you, you know, other people are still going to look at you the way you used to be. But you know what, you know when you have experience with God, you know what it's about. You know, you know, what, I'm, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just like people, and that's the thing, conversion, when you get saved, you know what? You're still the same person, but you just know you have a different, you just have a different, um, a different, um, I don't know what you want to call it, just a different reason for living. You have God in your life. You have God in your life and stuff. You don't need all that other stuff you used to do. You have God, and you change. The moment of, moment of salvation, you change. You're not the same person. You know, Saul's testimony was awesome. He went from persecuting Jews to leading to a leading spokesman of the gospel. And that's the thing about it. You know, when God saves, he saves. You know, and I, I look at like um, Saul. He went from persecuting Christians. It is a, and that's just one, that's one thing he did. It could be going from selling crack cocaine to, um, to following God. It could be anything. It could be any type of sin. It doesn't make a difference. You fill in the blank. You know, Saul, who became Apostle Paul, went on to write most of the New Testament and went many to God. That's a testimony. That's the testimony. Killing Christians to winning Christians. 360. Everybody say 360. 360. The thing about Apostle Paul's testimony is that we can all relate to it. You know, we all were blind and now we can see. It's not to say that sometimes, you know, our vision gets a little blurry, but we now see. Our eyes are opened. Amen. After we experience God, our scales fall off our eyes. Amen. Amen. We can relate to Paul because we're all like him in some form. 
But one day God intervened in our life and it changed everything. Everything that used to be cloudy is sunny. Everybody say sunny. sunny. Not everything is perfect because it's not perfect, but isn't life much clearer now? Isn't much life much clearer now? You can see things for what they really are. It's hard going through life spiritually blind. When you're spiritually blind, you just you have no idea what you're going through, what's, you know, what's coming at you, what's, what's going, running away. It's just tough. It's hard going through life without direction, not knowing what path God wants you to take. Plain and simple, plain and simple. I want you to say this right here. We all need God. We all need God, plain and simple. So as I close today, I want to leave you with seven reasons why you should, why you should share your testimony. Seven reasons why you should share your testimony. Number one, it creates bridges and connections with others. If you want to, if you want to impact somebody, you, you need to build a bridge and a connection. Not, to, not tell them, like, you know, how great you are. But you need to build a bridge and a connection. And a testimony is a connection and a bridge to somebody. It lets them know, you know what, hey, I've been there, buddy. I've been there, sir. I've been there, ma'am. And you know what? And, and I can relate to you. It's funny. It's, it, when I think about this right number one, uh, bridges and connections, I think about, um, I've heard people say before, like, you, you have somebody who's trying to lose weight and a person who's already lost weight. And the person who's, uh, who lost weight already is just like, look how great I look. That's not going to create a bridge. You're going to be like, get out of here, Barbie. <laughs> just, just leave. Just leave. I want to know how you did it. I don't care about the end result, but I want, I, know, I want to know how you did it. I want that bridge, that connection. And bridges and connections lead to relationships. Which, number two, um, why you should share, share your testimony. It fosters relationships. You know, Christianity is relationship-based. If you have no relationship, they don't care who you are. They don't care if you're accolades. I don't care if you have, you know, if, if, if you've written 15 books and you've brought so many people to like salvation. You have to have a relationship with people. Jesus had relationships with people. He had relationships with his apostles and other people in his life. Do they have, all have the same access? No. Some people you don't want to have, um, you don't want them to have access to your life because they're scary. Scary people. Just like we, we, just like we, uh, we were doing our Wednesday night study. Some people are scary. But you know what? But you have to have relationship. Even scary people need relationships. People that are close to you, middle range, and, and people, you just you have, you have to have relationships in order to um, connect with them. And testimonies create foster relationships. Number three, it develops transparency within the church. Transparency. Everybody say. Let's be real. Transparency is being real with people. It's not trying to put on that fake smile when, when you're dying inside. It's just, you know, saying, you know what? I struggle. This is hard for me. But because of God, I made it through. You know, and, and for me personally, I don't know about everybody else, but for me personally, I, I respect transparent people. I don't like when people are just like, you know what, telling me what I want to hear. I want to hear what you really, you know, what you really think, you know. Don't, don't try to tell me something that you think I want to hear because that's not being transparent. That's just basically being like a chameleon. We need, we need more people in church to be transparent and not chameleon. Not change with the colors, change with the weather. Number four, fourth reason why you should share your testimony. It demonstrates God's power. There's been so many people that I've come across though in my life, and man, and God has changed their life dramatically. I'm talking about just like they were just like low self-esteem, didn't have any type of um, any type of foundation, and if they, they were in state assistance, they just like everything was just about you know how, what they could get, they could, what they could get, get, get. Now there's just like their transforming power of God has caused them to like have a great, you know, just get, have a nice job, have confidence, and basically just um, you know. Tell people, just live, live, live like God wants them to live. He doesn't want us to always take, he wants us to give. So God's power, when we, test, when we give testimonies, God's power just sh um, comes through. It's like shines, it's like a rock. It's like, I, I kind of see like a testimony is like a, a testimony is kind of like a rock. 
underneath a um, like some type of like uh, cover, and it's just like it's just it's just waiting to just like be told and shine. Ooh. All right, number five, fifth reason why we should share a testimony. It showcases the love of God. You know, God is love, and God cares about every all of our needs. Little ones, big ones. And when we, t we give testimonies, we tell others how much love you know, God has for us. You know, we can use scripture, we can use the Bible, but we can also use our personal testimonies, which sometimes, sometimes can be stronger than the, what the scripture says. You know, scripture is strong, but I'm saying, but when you say, you know what, hey, you know, I just, I feel I was going to commit suicide and you know what, God just, I, I experienced God's love enough to that, you know, I didn't do it and now I'm just, I'm just living my life for him. That's powerful. That's strong. Number six, sixth reason why we should share a testimony is it reminds, of, it reminds us of our victories. It reminds us of our victories. Sometimes we forget when we have a victory because it's been so long ago that it's just kind of like that, that thought and idea or that thought in that, that uh, situation is kind of dusty and I forgot about it. But now, when you testify, give testimonies, it reminds us of our victories. God is victory. The victory I, I, I received from God. And we all need, we all need to be uplifted with vic stories of, uh, of victory. Because we all going, just like, you know, like I said earlier, we have no idea what we're going through. Each of us, is, we go through different things each day. It doesn't always have to, you know, we're not always going to go around telling people our dirt, our underwear, our, our dirty, our, our dirty stories, you know, our things. But, you know, when we testify, it just builds us up and it just, it just, it helps us just overcome. And the last, the last reason why we should share our testimonies, it glorifies God. And that's, and that's why I left it number, uh, number seven, the, the, the most important one, because it, it just points other people to God, not to you. Your testimony may be, may be very powerful, but it points people to God. And that's, what we, and that's what God has called us to do. He's called us to be ambassadors and, to, um, and just to tell people the good news about the gospel. So those are, those are seven reasons that I, when I was researching, that I came up with about um, why you should share your testimony. I think each one of them is a powerful reason. And, you know, I just encourage everybody to, you know, if you have an opportunity to help somebody in your testimony, do it. Because you don't know what type of impact, you don't have any idea what type of eternal impact that it will have on that person. It might be the difference between heaven and hell. It might be the, uh, the, uh, the, the difference between being alive and suicide. You don't know. All right, if we could bow our heads. Dear God, I, I thank you for today. God, I thank you, I thank you for this, this uh, message about testimony, God. You know, testimony is a very powerful thing. It's something, you know, obviously, God, you want us to tell people about the good news. You want to tell us about our story. We each have a story that we can tell the world. God, it does all, it, it, and it does all these things. It points people to God. It, 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 it reminds us of our victories, God. It, it showcases the, your love, and it demonstrates your power and many other things that I didn't even list today. But we just, I thank you, God. Just, you know, we thank you, God, for just, you know, for just the power of testimony, God. Just to, you know, just to be ambassadors to your kingdom. And just, you know what, and I just, like I said, I encourage everybody to, whenever they can give a testimony about their life, something they've been through personally, just to do that. Because, you know what, you have no idea when you, when you give a testimony, the impact that it will have on that person plus other people. It's powerful. Okay, my next question for everybody, if you, um, for people here and people that are not, that are listening, um, if Jesus is not the Lord of your life, um, could you raise your hand? God's coming back soon. Got to be ready. And those who may be listening, if you, I can't see your hand, but I, if, if you did, if you did raise your hand, I want you to recite this prayer for me. It's a salvation prayer. I want you to re repeat this right now. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for forgiveness. I believe that you died for my sins. 
and rose from the dead. Today I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my life. Fill me with your, fill me with your spirit so I can know you, serve you, and follow you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, I thank you. If you were watching here, if you're watching, um, I just thank you. Today is the best day you made, this, the best decision you made in your life. And I just, in heaven's rejoicing right now. My next, my, I encourage you for your next steps. If you're not in a church, I encourage you to, become, to get into a church and become part of a body. It's a very important that you're part of a body of, of believers. If you don't have, if you if you if you don't have a church, Lansing Calvary Assembly, God welcomes you here. So if you like, you know, we, we welcome you here, and if, if, if you'd like to come and visit, we 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 we, we definitely love it. All right. If there's anybody right now, if you got, if anybody here has any um, prayer needs, any prayer needs. For yourself, for your family, for another individual, I'd like you to come up to, up to the altar right now, and we'll have some prayer warriors come up here and pray with you. So, if you have any 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 type of any any need that you have right now, currently, or, or it might be ongoing, just come up to the prayer, the altar, and we'll we will pray with you. And for the rest of us right here, um, as we close, I'm gonna, I want, I like to recite this uh, benediction prayer, which is a, a prayer of blessing before we, uh, before we um, go about our ways today. This is out of Numbers, chap uh, Numbers uh, chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. May the Lord bless you and protect you this week. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you this week. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace this week. God, I just thank you for today, God. I, I thank you for just the opportunity to, to come here today and, and just, you know, just to um, preach the gospel and, 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 and just impact people's lives, God. And we thank you for Lansing Calvary, God. We just thank you for this church, how you've been so good to us, you've blessed us, and, and just kept us afloat, you know. God, you know, thing, COVID, has, COVID has wrecked things and it's caused people to, you know, it's caused fear in the people. But you know what, God, you have your hand on Lansing Calvary, Assembly of God. And we thank you for that, God. And we just pray that you just keep on guiding us and giving us direction so we can just be the hands, the feet, and the voice of Jesus to this generation that needs you. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.